The evil of the Skeksis and the magnificence of Thra can be summed up with one word, tortle. These huge shelled reptiles grew so large that they even incorporated entire landscapes into their flesh, eventually absorbing soil, rock, and land after many trine of hibernation. Upon waking, they would often find small ecosystems growing on their backs, and when drifting out to the Silver Sea, they would appear as small islands floating on the ocean, even falling into a deep hibernation adrift in the waves, sleeping for ages by slowing down their metabolism. Unfortunately though, many did not even make it out of infancy, as the Skeksis prized young turtle. These poor creatures, only hatched days ago, were served alive inside pies, and would often eat their way out during the dinner, only to be quickly consumed by the saw-blade maw of a Skek. Twin-tailed shellfish found in schools of millions off the Seafin coast. Shrumpen were one of the Skeksis' most prized meals for their banquets, as their flesh was plump, juicy, and meaty. They were so popular that Seafin sailors were expected to gift gargantuan loads of these creatures at tithing ceremonies, to such an extent that their entire population was nearly driven to extinction from overfishing. And when consumed, the Skeksis preferred them raw, wriggling, and smothering to death in gravy. Well, it must be a Skeksis dinner menu video today because another one of the Skeksis' favorite meals, found in abundance wherever one might dig, were leafar worms. These squiggly, tubular creatures were extremely hardy and resilient, being able to heal itself from any wound, no matter how severe. It could even regenerate itself when split in two, as one worm would suddenly grow another head and become two separate life forms. Even though they lived in the soils of Thra, these worms were one of the only creatures that not only survived, but thrived even as the crystal was spreading the darkening throughout the lands. Originally born at sea, the humhead was an aquatic life form which made its way inland through waterways as it became fully grown spending the rest of their lives in the thick mass of the endless forest. With large eyes that helped them see in murky waters, and even at night, they had long neck stalks with pointed heads surrounded by a mass of slithering tentacles, held together by a decorative shell. When threatened, they could actually collapse their bodies into a shapeless jelly and hide away inside the shell for protection. A native resident in a truly foreign environment. The Lafizer is basically a combination of a rat and a frog, with ruffled fur, a stringy tail, deep twitchy eyes, and long powerful legs. They could perform an extremely acrobatic vertical leap, jumping high into the branches of tree and berry bushes to retrieve their favorite fruits and nuts. Once a good food source was located, they would strip the plant of almost all of its goods stuffing and storing their prizes inside of their expansive cheek pouches. Once back at their homes, they would regurgitate their food and store it for entire seasons, as their saliva acted as a natural preservative. What else can you say about this creature but wow? The two-eyed stickler was a thin, spindly, innocent animal with two bulging eyes, four long multi-jointed legs, and covered in crystalline fur. But, if you see one, never touch it, because these little guys are in fact one of the most lethal creatures on the planet. Each hair protruding from its body holds a tiny bead of poison at the tip, and upon contact, your muscles would immediately lock and become inflamed with intense pain for the entire day. If you have some Nebri milk on hand, better chug it quick for a cure. Interestingly, they also have a cool connection to the great Skeksis hunter, Skekmal, as he utilized their poison to coat the tips of his hunting snares. Considered to be auspicious omens by Seafin sailors, the Dubabub is one of the most elegant creatures of Thra's oceans. Resembling aquatic dinosaurs, 
They had long, rounded bodies with a smiling head attached to a long neck, and often growing as many as 18 fins, using them to gracefully glide through the ocean, its head just above the waterline. They were social creatures who could most often be found in large groups, and because they had strength in numbers, they had very few predators, as they would band together to defend themselves. But, most of the time, they could be seen just simply having fun, playing in the surf off of the coastlines. Every Dark Crystal fan remembers tendrils. They were pink gelatinous creatures resembling a mass of tentacles, almost a sea anemone out of water. Inside that mess of limbs, there was a mouth, and each tendril was equipped with a powerful neurotoxin that could knock a small creature out for hours with even the smallest graze. They would lie motionless for hours along the cliff sides of the Seafin coast and the endless mountains, waiting for food to come, and then lashing out rapidly to latch on to their prey, pulling them into their mouths while still alive. Although mostly motionless and sedentary for most of their lives, entire colonies would often roll themselves to new locations like living tumbleweeds. Found growing on root vegetables throughout the farms on the Spriton Plains, fungals were small, squishy, worm-like creatures that utilized the farmer's crops to sustain themselves by consuming the plant's water, manure, and fertilizer. It did this by absorbing the matter through microscopic mouths located at the end of the delicate veins which sprouted from its head and body. But it had to try its best not to be eaten itself come harvest time. Fortunately though, fungals smelled and tasted as bad as they sound, so detecting them was quite easy. Another desert creature which was revered by the Dusin, the armored bub was an armadillo-like creature with a sharp snout, rocky claws, and a thick plated shell protecting its body. Its name was developed quite literally, as this creature is obviously armored, but it also makes a very distinct bub-bub-bub sound as it sniffs around for food in the crystal desert. The reason the Dusin respected this particular animal so much is because it was actually one of the peeper beetle's only natural predators, one of the only life forms brave enough, you could say, to take it on, and the Dusin commended its protection of precious eyes. <laughs>